I'm not nervous, I'm just excited. All right, so my name is Ryan Tempe. I'm a senior data scientist at the Lego Group on the marketing effectiveness team. Uh, I basically build marketing mix models in R to help the Lego Group uh, optimize all their different forms of media spending. You can find me on Twitter at, at Ryan Tempe, where I like to tweet about my dog, dinosaurs, and all the fun things I do in R. You can also check out my Twitter for exclusive bonus content to this talk that did not make the cut. So I'm here today to talk to you about learning R by creating side projects. Uh, side projects have been a critical part of my learning experience in R, and I want to share some of those experiences with you today. Uh, whenever I'm interested in learning a new package or a new technical concept, I have to come up with a project designed for me to learn it, and then once I'm comfortable, I can begin using it in my work. So, for example, two years ago when Tidy Text came out, I used data science to answer this really important question. Which season of the Golden Girls should I watch when playing a drinking game? <laughs> yeah, this is silly and stupid, but that's my point. Um, so R is always changing and we're always learning, and so sometimes it feels like a struggle to keep up with all the new technology and packages. And over my eight or so years of using and learning R, I found that side projects really work well for me uh, to learn these new tools on my own terms. And then once I'm comfortable, I can use them in my work. So I like to come up with this really ridiculous question, like the Golden Girls drinking game. And this works for me because I get to learn the new tool uh, using data and a topic that I'm already familiar with. So the only unknown for me is the new tool itself. So this is what I did with Tidy Text. If you're not familiar, uh, Tidy Text is a package by Julia Silge and David Robinson that can take text and turn it into a tidy data table. It's a really powerful tool that can t make parsable data from anything from literature to financial earnings reports, or in my case, TV show scripts. And I just love the idea of these two professional programmers out there making this really powerful tool for the R community, and I'm just using it to get drunk. Um, but you know what, that worked. So I can make this look a lot more like data science with some charts. Uh, so again, if you and your friends are hanging out one night and playing the Golden Girls drinking game, which season should you watch to maximize your drink consumption? So if you're responsible and not familiar with drinking games, you basically watch a television show and each time one of the characters performs a specific action, you take a sip of your drink. So for the Golden Girls, when Rose talks about her hometown of St. Olaf, Dorothy talks about her ex-husband Stan, or when any of the women eat cheesecake, you're gonna drink. Uh, in looking at this lovely beach-colored bar chart on the left, I proved, with data science I remind you, that if you're going to play the Golden Girls drinking game and you wanna drink the most, watch season five. And that's because in the later episodes of the season, Rose talks about her hometown a lot, uh, and you're gonna drink about 10 more drinks that season than season six. That said, uh, I'm not sure how much of a good idea it is to watch an entire season of a TV show for one drinking game. Um, definitely not healthy. So instead, look at the other chart on the right. This shows the cumulative drinks per minute for each of the seasons. And here you can see that maybe seasons four or six are gonna be a better idea for you because they ramp up the drinks quickly in the first 100 minutes. Um, if you watch season five, you need to watch 400 minutes of the show or 16 episodes to exceed your drink consumption from season four or six. Um, so this is how I learned Tidy Text. I hope, hope you're proud of me. Um, and, uh, but I get it. Uh, I, tidy Text, I use it all the time now. Uh, in all my projects, both at work and for side projects. And I get it, you, like, Golden Girls is, is a very old show and you might not be interested in that. So we can use Tidy Text for a lot of other things. Like the Good Place drinking game. Because <laughs> once you learn how to do it once, it's really easy to repeat. Uh, so here, you drink any, every time Eleanor says fork, or Janet reminds someone that she's not a girl. And here, you're gonna watch season one. Or the Jurassic Park drinking game. Literally any drinking game, you give me the, the TV show or the movie and I'll solve it for you. Uh, using Tidy Text. And so um, here, we now know that if you watch the two hour movie, you're gonna consume 80 drinks during the course of that movie. 
And this one's a little bit different because we're not optimizing a problem. There's only one movie or one movie that matters. And, uh, but you know what? I love the movie. I already have the tools with tidy text and I already have the data. So I just, why not make this chart? So I already had the data because of a different mini side project I did when a different new package came out. So I wanted to learn how to make animated GG, uh, GG plots with the GG animate package. And again, using data that means something for me is just way more fun. Uh, so I spent three days watching Jurassic Park. I paused the movie every few seconds uh, to figure out which characters were in the scene, to count all the dinosaurs on the screen, uh, and to just jot down all the locations. Uh, and I did this all for data science. So here we have animated character paths of the main characters in Jurassic Park and where they move throughout the movie. We have three maps. We have the globe, if they move from the Badlands where they're digging up the bones, to the island itself. We have a map of the island in the middle uh, where they moved between the different dinosaur exhibits. And then we have a map of the visitor center with the interior scenes. And in the middle, every time a dinosaur eats one of the characters, a little skull emoji pops up. Uh, so this is a small, silly project, but I learned GG Animate this way, and now like I learned all the features and transition elements and how to use them and when to use them, and that set me up for being able to use it in some of my more serious work. Sorry. Other times, I approach the learning experience from the other side around. Um, I dream up a really fun project that I want to complete with R, but I don't have the tools to do so yet. Um, so take a look at this chart. This is a rolling average of some mortality data from the United States. Um, it's generally decreasing, so that's a really good thing. Uh, take another look, though, and look closely. Do you think maybe, does this chart look like a dinosaur to you? And spoiler alert, the answer is yes. Um, it looks just like a dinosaur. Um, so doodling on charts is a lot of fun. I do it a lot, um, especially with tablets. It's, yeah. Um, but for this project, I wanted a lot of doodles, like thousands of them. Um, so in this case, getting a computer to doodle for me was going to be way more fun. So here we have another dinosaur doodle drawn from this data. Uh, but this doodle was made with a lot of data science and data science that can create any dinosaur from any data. <laughs> yeah. Problems you never knew you had. Um, so a few years ago, it seemed like everyone out there was building Twitter bots. Um, and Twitter bot is a win-win. A computer does all the work, and a human gets all the credit, all the Twitter likes, and all the retweets. And I wanted in on this. So uh, I built Datasaurs which takes a time series of data um, and it finds a dinosaur outline that's closely correlated with it. It then redraws the dinosaur using that time series as the outline, colors it in, uh, and displays it on this fun poster. R sends out a tweet, rinse and repeat every few hours forever, and you have a Twitter bot. The thing is, when I set out to do this, I did not know how to do this. Um, my knowledge of R at the time was very limited to data manipulation and uh, regressions, and I didn't really have the tools to accomplish my goals here. Uh, so doing this, I learned a lot of new packages. Um, so I started with what I could do, uh, and then I would plan out the next step whenever there was a roadblock. I would do some research to see what tools and packages were available for me to accomplish this, and then um, yeah, I would get it to work for data stores. I learned the package along the way, uh, and then I move on to the next one. So some examples of this are, I use the Philopic API to actually get all these dinosaur images onto my computer. Uh, what's it? Well, uh, Geome Raster actually lets me draw the dinosaur on a ggplot. Grid Extra to arrange a lot of ggplots on the same chart. Uh, RVest, because I wanted trivia facts to make this more scientific. So on the bottom, I had to scrape Wikipedia to display some facts. Um, you see the fun color patterns on that? I had to relearn some basic trigonometry from high school, because that's all sines and cosines. 
uh, our tweet in the Twitter API to put that into a, pat or a tweet, and then batch processing so I did not have to hit the enter button every time I wanted to make one of these. So the output of this is really silly, uh, but I learned a ton of new tools that I use every day as, at my work as a data scientist. Not the dinosaur drawing part, but everything else. Uh, and so solving this silly problem just made me a much better data scientist. Um, before I move on, take one more look at that dinosaur. Uh, we use data science to make this really cool dinosaur. Uh, right now it only exists on my computer, but pretend it's real for a second. We have a brand new problem. What do we name it? Um, or if you're a paleontologist and you are about to publish this brand new dinosaur discovery, uh, what are you gonna call it? So from what I can tell, and I'm not a paleontologist, um, naming a dinosaur is a huge privilege. Like there's these really great powerful sounding ones that, are used, like, that use Greek and Latin, like Brontosaurus, which means thunder lizard, Tyrannosaurus rex, which means the tyrant lizard king. And I wanna name my dinosaur something really cool too, but I don't know Greek and I don't know Latin. So in this case, I'm gonna introduce you to my friend Deep Learning and Artificial Intelligence, quite possibly the trendiest of the data sciences. So for this side project, I used someone else's side project because I saw someone do a really cool side project and I was like, I could do that too, and I did it. Um, so Jacqueline Nolis, you may have seen here, give a talk a few hours ago uh, with Heather Nolis, uh, published a really fun project using recurrent neural networks to generate new offensive license plates from a list of plates that had been banned in Arizona. So people in Arizona, I guess, sent out, like they tried to get some vanity license plates with bad words on them. Arizona said no way, and then they kept a list of those words. Um, so she used that as her training set and she generated this list, and a small sample was there. Um, and along with her output, she shared her code in a blog post of explaining some of the math and the tricks behind the algorithm. Thanks to open source, I clicked the clone button on her repo, and I changed it to work for extinct reptile names. So after a few minutes, my computer spat out a list of brand new, never before seen awesome dinosaur names. So here we, I can't say them all. Uh, here we have Cerasaurus, Metroterosops, Dinorhyrosaurus, Allioraptor, all these really awesome sounding names that don't yet have an actual animal attached to them. Um, but seriously, I like this project because it lowered the barriers of entry for me to begin using deep learning with Keras and R. So AI and deep learning are buzzwords in data science, closely associated with advanced image recognition and natural language processing, and that's true. Uh, but that association can make it super daunting uh, for someone like me who is new to deep learning to actually start uh, using a deep learning project. Uh, so when I saw something using deep learning as simple, with as simple as license plates, I was really excited to leverage Jacqueline's work with my own data uh, so I could begin building my own models and begin using deep learning and Keras in my work. And then finally, uh, side projects are great because sometimes they can become real things and land you a job. Um, so a while before I joined my current company, I wanted to figure out how to use the tidyverse to build a Lego mosaic and then to build it as cheaply as possible. Uh, and so it's a relatively simple problem. You take an image, you pixelate it, you change every pixel to a Lego color, uh, and effectively you have bricks and then you combine single adjacent pixels or bricks of the same color, uh, and that saves you money. And so I shared this on Twitter in a blog post, and people really liked it, and that motivated me to keep on working on it. And so I kept on developing this. I added a bunch of new features, some that were requested, some that I just wanted to do. I uh, learned a lot of packages to make it work, and I figured out how to put it into a package of its own, and then eventually I ended up with Bricker. So Bricker is an R package, also a side project, um, that can take an image and a ggplot and turn it into Lego bricks. Um, so you feed the function an image and it returns the Lego version of it, as well as the instructions you need to build it and then all the pieces you need to build it. Uh, it also can take a list of instructions and then create a 3D Lego model for you. Um, 
this in itself is a side project. Oh, thank you. I'll allow it. So this in itself was a side project within a side project because I really wanted to learn Tyler Morgan Wall's ray shader package. Uh, but again, using data I want to use, not his data. So um, instead of maps and topography and boring stuff, I used it to make br Lego bricks. Um, but in the process of doing this, I learned so much about his package and how to make it work uh, that in later versions I actually switched from relying on his package directly and instead used his underlying source code as a jumping off point to get my project to work. Uh, but to be honest, the cool factor is pretty high with this. The usefulness factor is pretty low. Uh, no, really low, yeah. Um, but developing this has really helped me to learn a ton of new things about R. Uh, there are so many tools needed to get a package working, uh, and, or at least working well, and then to ensure that it builds correctly for many people and is as accessible as possible to as many people as possible. Uh, in doing this, and I'm still definitely working on it, this is not on CRAN because it's too much work, uh, really challenges me as a programmer. Uh, and then beyond that, building Bricker as a side project really helped with my portfolio. So around the time I was working on this, the Lego group decided to hire data scientists in the US. Uh, and just let me tell you this, already having a portfolio of work idolizing your future employer uh, can do wonders for your job application. <laughs> yeah. Um, and now I'm here, standing in front of you today at this super serious conference talking about drinking games. Um, I'm pretty sure I professionally peaked. <laughs> so there we have it. Um, working on these humorous side projects really opened some doors and developed me as an R programmer. Uh, side projects provide a safe learning environment to enable you to set yourself up so you can succeed and learn on your own terms. Uh, and then building side products can create new resources for yourself and others, uh, making it so much easier for other people out there to learn from the work that you did. And I hope maybe I've inspired some of you to kind of go home with all these new skills that you've learned over today and you will learn tomorrow and create some really cool side projects and share them with me. So thank you. I am happy to take any questions. And while we wait, oh, thank you. One. While we wait, we can check out the office drinking game. All right. Thanks. Okay, so we have time for a few questions. Let me see if I can actually get this out of here, so I'm not tethered to it. Okay, uh, so it looks like one popular question is, how do you find time for side projects? Yeah, I was expecting that. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm definitely privileged because I have a lot of free time. Um, I'm sing or I don't have any kids right now, so uh, that's a big thing. Um, but I stopped playing video games at one point, and so I found a lot of free time, but <laughs> that's it. Okay. Uh, another question we have from the Jacqueline Nolis, who inspired one of your projects. How did you make the background maps for the Jurassic Park GG Animate? So I'm not a drawer, but I uh, got a drawing program on my iPad and traced it with an SVG and then loaded the SVG into the ggplot, which I originally had a slide on, but I had to cut it. Easy question. I like those. Uh, so maybe one final question, and then we might uh, get the next speaker set up. Uh, have you made charts of the variation in how much you have to drink per episode? <laughs> um, I mean, the one we're showing on the screen right here, if it's still up, is it? Yes. Uh, that's actually per episode by, uh, for The Office. Uh, I haven't done it for The Golden Girls. Uh, but yeah, in theory, yes. But I've never played this game, any of these games. Just putting that out there. It's purely for academic research. Well, I said that was the last question, but I have one more question that's really good, and we have time. You okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so where do you get inspiration for new side projects? I was a weird kid. Um, <laughs> it, these things come to me, and I just have to do it. So, like, I don't know. Yeah, that's it's my brain wiring. Sorry. So then my question is, are you a Golden Girls fan? Oh, for sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. 
So what is your favorite character? Depends on the episode and the, the yeah, I can't pick. All four. Okay, mine's Rose, but. <laughs> I admire you for picking. Yeah, you gotta go with one. Okay, right, thank, you. thank you, Ryan. Thank you.